In the end, the vote produced major changes in women's self-esteem and slow, incremental changes in their power. While the National Women's Party focused on the Equal Rights Amendment, activists from the old National American Women's Suffrage Association, NORSA, formed the League of Women Voters to educate women about the issues of the day. These social feminists, often working through the Women's Bureau and the Children's Bureau, as well as the National Women's Trade Union League and the National Consumers League, lobbied for such reforms as wage and hour laws for working women, mothers' pensions for impoverished dependent women, education and industrial reform, and a wide range of child health programs on the state level. They became active in the governing of the Democratic and Republican parties and cooperated to form the Women's Joint Congressional Committee to promote federal legislation. They advocated for, but did not win, a child labor amendment to the Constitution, and they won federal legislation, the Shepard Towner Act of 1921, to provide federal government matching grants to support clinics and health care in the interests of rural women and their children. Opposition from organized medical professionals killed the bill when it came up for renewal in 1927. Significantly, social feminists began to take positions in the federal and state administrative structures where their influence would become widely felt in the New Deal years. Mary Dewson and Crystal Eastman served on minimum wage commissions in New York and Massachusetts. Frances Perkins became Commissioner of Labor in New York State. Eleanor Roosevelt, even before she became the wife of New York's governor, became active in the Women's Trade Union League as well as the Democratic Party. These women and many more formed an interlocking network of friends and acquaintances eager to influence the course of women's rights, but we should point out still committed to male breadwinner roles in the household and women's primary responsibility for caring for the home and children. Yet their activities in movements for peace, international cooperation, anti-lynching crusades, and trade union organization, as well as their advocacy for some form of socialism, led the Department of Labor to develop what it called spider web charts to keep track of organizations run by black and white women who they already, in the early 1920s, deemed to be subversive.